All right, it's time for Wrestling with Sports. I'm Dennis Farrell. There's Jason Kindle, Dimitri Young, Darren McCarty. We're welcoming our guest, Tina, original guy I've been after for so long. I've heard amazing stories from Petey Williams, who's one of my best friends. Just can't stop saying enough kind things about you. Now you are probably, and I put this on Twitter the other night before I get you know phased out of my own podcast here. I, I put this out on Twitter the other night. This Eric Young we're watching is the best version of Eric Young I think I've ever seen. And I am in love with what he's doing. Eric Young to the podcast, everybody. Man, thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, this is cool. Quite the setup you guys got. Uh, in, interesting uh, group of red tag individuals, which is, uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll fit right in, man. This is super cool. Very cool. Okay, so hey. <laughs> I want to call you Jeremy. I don't know what you go by because I, I'll dip into the – do you care if I call you Jeremy or, or Eric? No, what I mean, Jer Jeremy's my real name. No one will know who you're talking about. If you say Jeremy, they'll be, like, wondering who this person is. Uh, like, you know, 50 or 60 people know who Jeremy is. Over 2 million know who Eric Young are. So, right. it's – it's hey, easier to call me. Hey, hey, I, I hey, hey, you know Jace, what? Jace there, needs there to hear that. Other, Say that again. Yeah, there are two other Eric Young, the um, black baseball players. Yeah. And so when we brought that up, he was like, you getting EY on the show? And and I was like, no, no, not that one. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting Eric Young, the Canadian badass. So yeah, ju junior and senior, right? Yeah, they both. I think they both played in Colorado. Yeah, exactly. Right. So where did I am going to shut up after I had to? I have to get this off my chest. And listen, um, I wasn't that big of a fan of Impact until obviously I met Dimitri and um, uh, Dennis, and uh, you know, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Have been. No, I knew who you were and this and that and all that stuff. But dude, I'm going to tell you what: anybody that can take the trident of Neptune and jab a flying fish. I don't know if it was a try. I don't know what it was. Is yeah. the baddest dude in the world. And I don't. Do you guys even know what I'm talking about? Do you, I don't. Okay. Oh my no, god. You, you I, do see, this, this, okay, this is where I'm going to shut up after the show. So maybe do your homework a little bit and check out his uh, uh, Animal Planet show. This dude is nuts. He's talking about he's catching alligators with a hook. This is why I, the reason I said I was going to shut up is because Dimitri is a huge yeah. fisherman. Huge yeah. fisherman. This guy's going out in extreme fishing. It's, it's unbelievable catching lemon sharks on a paddleboard, standing up. I'm not lying. And the best part, exactly. See, Eric, uh, Jeremy, I'm the one who does the homework. I might talk a lot, but I'm the one who, because I'm going to tell you what, dude, your show is awesome. I, I know it's, I don't yeah. know when the last time it was, but dude, you're crazy and I love it. I mean, trying to pull up a carp that weighs about 800 pounds by rope into a boat, bloody all over his hand. Dude, Dimitri, it is so up your alley. It's unbelievable. He is nuts. I love it. I'm going to try to shut up for the rest of the show, but just remember that, Eric, that I'm the one who actually did the homework, and I'll be honest with you, I've actually seen the show before. I, uh, even, I, I Googled you today, and I obviously know who you are. Wrestling -wise, but I'm going to tell you what, dude. You're, you're a tough son of a bitch. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it was a fun show. Fun show. I think what it does, it, one of the questions, Eric, obviously, is that I, I'm just shaking my head here, and Jason doesn't realize, but you're Canadian, and, and that's what us Canadians do. I mean, it's just sort of another challenge. My question to you is, yeah. how did you develop, and I agree with Dennis, the Eric Young that we are seeing now, and I, and I guess the question is to you, do you feel that this is the best version of yourself that you're putting on display right now as far as you know, the wrestling creativity where you're at in your life? Because you're, you've been around a lot, you know, you're a veteran, you're, you're an OG. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, I can say that like, uh, I mean, as you guys know, in, in anything in all walks of life, like you, nothing can replace experience, you know? And for me, I think one of my biggest accomplishments in wrestling is I've seen the show, I've seen the card, I've seen, you know, television wrestling wise from all aspects. Like I've been the opening match, I've been the main event. I've made people laugh. I've made them cry. I've made them hate me. I've made them afraid of me. Uh, you know, I, I've done, I've wrestled women. Uh, you know, like I, I jumped out of a tree on Scott Bayo. I beat the crap out of Danny Bonaducci when he was 65. Like I've done all this stuff. And I feel like I've always kind of done it believably. And I think like the versatility, I may not be the best 
technician or the best high flyer or the best tag guy or the best world champion or any of that. But I feel like I might be the most versatile wrestling in the history of the business. And I, I've literally done it all. And like he was talking about my fishing show for me, I'm an experiential person. I want to experience everything good, bad, and indifferent. And in wrestling, I, I, I've done that. Um, I'm very comfortable in my skin, especially in front of the camera, like during wrestling. And right now, I mean, honestly, because of the way things went, going back home, the pandemic, all this stuff happening, like I got a chip on my shoulder, man. Like I'm 40, but I got a ton of gas left in the tank and uh, I'm ready to rock and roll for sure. And it, it feels good, man. Impact is growing like crazy. And what other wrestling company can say that right now during a global pandemic? Now, Dimitri. Hey, hey, oh, man, I just wanted to compliment all the Eric Young throughout the years, you know, with Team Canada, Super A, when you was the uh, TNA heavyweight champion. Even when you went over to W, I loved you when you was with Sanity up until the main roster call because yep. you was very much underutilized. And how do you uh, – Wait, did you take acting school when you was growing up or anything? Because the characters that you get in, like you said, they're very believable. Even when you whipped up on Rich Swan's ass, man. God damn, why'd you do that to him like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, so like the thing I think what drew me to wrestling is it really is, it's like this perfect amalgamation of my two biggest loves in life and that sport and theater. Like I, I, I did improv Olympics. I did community theater I, I i was in a musical not much of a singing voice anymore but uh yeah like i i, I love that aspect I, I was in the drama club uh I, you know i did all this stuff acting and, and and things of that nature as much as it was available to me in chatham ontario which is not a whole lot but i loved athletics too i i played rugby i was offered a partial scholarship to play rugby for the university of hamilton and i turned it down because i wanted to go wrestling so like two weeks after High school, I was I was out of wrestling school, and Jason just the does rest that. Is kind of history, um, but yeah, it's pro wrestling to me is pro wrestling to me is the is the two loves of my life smashed into one thing. I get to do them both at the same time. That's awesome because we grew up in the same area. You're from you know yeah. from Chatham, and I, I'm from Leeds. So she, you're uh, what is that? Keck County and I'm Essex County or whatever like yeah. that. So, yeah, that's right. And I think now I think they're 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 side by side because it's. It's Chatham Kent is, is one huge area like that. The that county kind of all got swallowed up into one big one. But if you look, it, it, and that's the one thing. So so like you said all along, where you um, were a sports fan and rugby, and you made that decision. How yeah. do you evolve? I always want to know where do you get like two million people know who Eric Young, the wrestlers. Where does that name? How do you guys that create that? Create the name, or where did you? Uh, like, cause you have to live and die with, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's who you are, your brand. Yeah, in wrestling. So I started in 1997, which is a long time ago. And it, it's crazy to think, but like at that point, no one used their real name in wrestling. Like Everyone used a completely made up name or part of their name. You know, Michael, you know, Shawn Michaels is Michael Hickenbottom. Steve Austin is a Steve Williams. Like no one used their real name. There's two reasons for that. It's one, you weren't supposed to be you. You were supposed to be another version of you or a larger than life character that you were playing. The other reason was protection. And this is before the internet. Like I get stuff sent to my house every week and I throw it in the garbage because I don't know who these people are sending me stuff, baseball cards to sign and stuff like that. I'll sign anything you want if you bring it to the show. Stop sending it to my house. Eric Young does not live. <laughs> but, no, and, uh, and, you, and you know what and that, that's just for the state because you're you're absolutely right dimitri and i it. and i'm sure dmac has the same problem no yep. you don't ever send anything that, that's sent to your house because all that is is probably the off the, the uh, autograph hounds that are there at you know three in the morning when you get to, to a different city waiting outside the hotel getting ready to sign everything but bottom yep. line is you're not eric young you're freaking aquaman dude you got the freaking <laughs> trident of neptune did you guys see what i so what yeah, I was showing true. during the, during I, when he was I've, talking, I've actually, was, I've actually so watched amazing. it. But he's Aquaman. Oh, that's your new I name, Aquaman. It yesterday or today, you know, I've seen that like when it was played a couple of years ago. You know, and that's where it came. Yeah. We also have like Les Stroud and all that uh, Survivor Man and all that shit. We watch. So yeah. I mean, that's that's a is that your biggest? You said your biggest loves where you combine theater and sports. Um, yeah. Fishing is that one of your pack great pastimes? 
So or- it was def- it was part of my life growing up. It, it's a really funny story how it happened. So I'll, I'll finish the story of Eric Young real quick. I'll make it as fast as possible. So if you guys can remember, you're all old enough probably to remember Columbia House. Oh, yeah. Had, like 40 yeah. Still in debt. for a penny or whatever. So, yeah, me too. Still digging my way out of that investment. Yeah. They uh, <laughs> they had the selections of the month. I'm in, my, I'm in a van. I'm on my way to get my first pair of wrestling boots. And all, there's three or four other guys in the van. We're all They're all going to just get plain black boots. I'm like, I'm not, that's boring. I, I love Ric Flair. I want to get my initials on the side. But, I mean, first of all, I'm 18 years old, and I don't like my real name and because I'm a stupid kid. And the second reason is no one used the real names. You had a made up persona. So I'm trying to think up names. We're throwing names around. And it happened to be a Columbia house ordering form in the van. It was classic rock selection that month. And there was an Eric Clapton and a Neil Young CD side by side. Uh, and that's literally, that's literally uh, what happened. Uh, Eric Young is, it's not a bad name. It's, no. just, it's not the most uh, showy name. I think part of it though, it lends it to the fact like Eric Young is generic enough where I can play all those different things Absolutely. and it's believable. So in the end, it, it all worked out. It's, uh, you know, it just kind of happened and it just kind of stuck. And I've, I've been Eric Young That's awesome. for, uh, for a long time, man, like half of my life, which is pretty wild to say. But doesn't that tell you that how things happen for a reason? Yeah, they do, man. Yeah, they do. Crazy. Now, I want to jump into your love of hockey because I'm a hockey nerd. I am one of the yeah. lucky guys because I'm sitting next to one of the greatest fighters in Detroit history, NHL history, right here in my little bitty apartment doing a podcast with the guy. You're a hockey fan. What yeah. was your wheelhouse of fandom for you? Uh, so, I mean, I grew up, you know, you know, down the road from where Darren grew up. Like, I mean, it's hockey central. I mean, like you can't. I mean, it's almost your force to play. Like, if you want to be social and have friends, like you play. So that was my life growing up. I played, uh, I didn't really play organized hockey because my parents didn't have a ton of money. Um, So I didn't play organized hockey until peewee. So my, you know, initiation into hockey, there was already contact. I never played before that. Um, And I, you know, I loved it. You know, I thought I was okay at it. And when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I'm going to play in the NHL. And I can remember I was probably... I don't know, maybe sixth or seventh grade. And I played against a guy that had just been drafted into the OHL in like a pickup game. And he was so much better than anybody. Like I couldn't take the puck from him. I couldn't knock him down. I couldn't. And right then and there, I said, well, I guess I'm not playing hockey anymore. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I suck at hockey. Uh, I still play to this day. I play two or three times a week uh, in rec leagues around here. Um, I mean, I can get around and stuff and, you know, I'm in shape, you know, there's no doubt about that. That's cool. But I've loved it my whole life. Like my whole life, heavily influenced by the Red Wings being right, you know, the Red Wings were closer to me than Maple Leafs were, but everyone in that area was like, you're a Maple Leafs fan or you're a Red Wings fan. And I ended up being a Maple Leafs fan. And I think I probably should have picked the other way. Well, you can right. still wait for the next sort of lines. I, I, I want to know, if, did you play any other sports besides hockey? I know, you know, baseball is a little bit up there. You know, you have Joey yeah. Votto and Justin Morneau, to name a couple of guys. Can you swing the bat? Yeah, I, so I, I baseball, like that was like what you did in the summer, right? So I played uh, baseball. There was – hardball didn't exist, but um, fast pitch, windmill, was very popular in that area. So I played windmill all the way up until high school, and then I stopped playing – uh, playing that. I, I mean, I was, I'm not tall now, but I was very short. So I wasn't very fast, but quick and small areas. I played second base, third base, mostly. Um, I was never great baseball player, but I loved it. You know, it, that's what you did in the summer, but I played uh, soccer. I played on a triple play travel team. I was goalkeeper for a soccer team, but rugby was like, that was the one sport I was really, really good at. I started playing in high school. I was captain of my, my rugby team. I played eighth man, which is basically like the running back of, of rugby uh, and just fell in love with the madness of rugby. But I mean, I, it, I loved it. All it, it. I played inside Eric, center, bro. So I, I Oh, awesome. Yeah. Eric, yeah. And, and this is one of the things we try to do with a lot of the kids that listen, um, since we have 26 listeners now. Um, Congratulations. The, 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 the 28, 28 maybe now that I'm here. And, and, and it's Thank all, you. all of us when what we say is like you know play all the sports you can especially growing yeah. up growing up uh, um 
you know, now when you maybe you're in high school and you want to pick one, if that's what you want to do, then so be it. But you, all the kids out there, our parents out there listening, is definitely play as many sports as you can because it's it's whatever one you're going to pick at the end of the day. Your uh, the other ones help your foot workout. They they help everything about your eye hand coordination, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I, I mean, and that's what I. But now you see how Dimitri just dropped Morneau and Votto. We got to give Russell Martin a little shout out too, because I mean, listen, I'm I'm behind the plate. See, he's a catcher. He just dropped first base where you played the most of your career. Exactly. So Russell Martin, boom. I'm learning catchers are like goalies, like they're they're di- they're different. Like if they get treated that way. It's so I, I thought I was a I thought I was the uh, catcher, but I, no, I'm more of a, like I'm more of like a first baseman or something. No arm, good glove. <laughs> 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 well, how did Eric? How did that? Uh, how did the um, fishing show and all that stuff come about? Because I, yeah. I know growing up in the area and stuff like that, we're sort of with, with the lakes around. But how does that come about? To because because Jason's enamored with that. Yeah, it's uh. So it's a it's a fun it's a really really funny story, and it's it, it, it's uh. I'm a believer in fate, and you know, and I, I try to treat everybody well, and you know, treat everyone with respect and. And, uh, stuff like that and it was definitely one of those like who knows you kind of thing so i was wrestling full-time for tna wrestling at that point it, you know the company was doing really well we were on spike tv the numbers were doing well we we're wrestling you know three or four house shows a week we're doing w- monthly pay-per-views i'm on every television show i'm on every pay-per-view i'm on every house show so like i'm busy like really really busy i'm barely home i'm on the road more than i'm home and there was a, uh, a, a woman that worked for uh, Impact in, in the production side of things, setting up shots and blocking and, and uh, uh, where they're going to set up the cameras and helping lights and stuff. Anyways, she ended up marrying Tommaso Ciampa. Her name's Jess Whitney. Now it's uh, – her name now is Jess Whitney. And uh, anyways, we became friends. She worked at TNA for a couple of years, then she quit, and then she went into production full time. Fast forward – whatever year it is, 2010, 2011, she calls me out of the blue and she says, hey, a buddy of mine is casting for this fishing show and I read the thing and I think you'd be great for it. Would you be interested? And I didn't, I literally didn't think anything about it. I just said, yeah, that sounds fun. Cool. I love fishing show. So like a week later, the guy that like basically came up with the concept of the show and sold it to Discovery is on the phone with me. And he looked up all this stuff like uh, at the time in TNA, I'm doing like funny stuff. I'm in Hollywood, like trying to find Scott Baio and (laughs) D'Lo Brown in a convenience store because I think he's CeeLo Green. (laughs) All of this, all of this super crazy stuff. And he looked up this a bunch of clips and he liked it. And he said, would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, sure. So they're casting it. And at this time, I don't know anything about the process. He's calling me like every other day and saying, hey, you're still in it. You're still in it. Discovery's whittling it down. And, and I just ha- had to say, look, man, like I'm busy, like wrestling full time. Like I'd love to do the show if you're interested, if they're interested. If not, no problems. You know, like, cool. No, no, no big deal. It's no, no skin off my back. I got a full time job already. So about a month goes by, I don't hear from him. And then he calls me and says, you got the job. So we're going to go shoot this sizzle reel, which is a small six or seven minute episode um, in Rhode Island, where we're going to do skishing, where it's this ex-Marine named Ed, and he basically, he does it at night. We did it during the day so we could see each other, but he basically, he gets in the water at, at uh, high tide, then the tide drags him out into the ocean, and he's holding on to a surf rod, and he fishes for striped bass while he's floating in the middle of the ocean. That's, that's what? what he does. Then he waits for the tide to turn and it brings him back to the beach and then he goes home. So he's a lunatic, uh, awesome guy, but that was the sizzle reel. So we shot that and they passed that around internally and then it got greenlit. Like literally it was like, it wasn't going to happen. And then two weeks later, 12 episodes had been approved and I was off shooting this show and it was, and it was wild. Like sharks from a paddle board and cut a, 365 pound Goliath grouper by hand lining tore my You cut an alligator with a fishing rod. Yeah, I jumped on the He's back of an out al- 13 foot alligator, which was pretty wild. Uh, it's a real life dinosaur. It's uh, what an experience, man. It was really cool show. Went all over the place, met all these amazing people, did all this cool stuff. And the funniest thing about the whole thing is when they asked me if I was interested, I said yes. They didn't ask me if I knew how to fish. They didn't, ask, they, didn't even, they didn't even ask me if I knew how to swim. Like I'm doing like deep sea breath hold diving, like where I'm holding my breath for two minutes at a time 
trying to spear these fish in the bottom of the ocean. And, I mean, they were going to cast this other guy, this little uh, comedian from Brooklyn. And I was like, man, if you guys would have booked him, if you would end up went with him as the host, you would have killed that kid. He'd be dead. <laughs> but yeah, he's I mean, killing I, squid. It's a, I'm telling you, D, it is so up your alley. Wild. It's unbelievable. Yeah. If you're a fishing guy at all, check it out. But I mean, I think what I liked oh, most yeah. about the show was it was just a good show. Like you didn't even have to like fishing. It was fun and funny and I'm drinking beers and making fun of these guys. And one so episode, I saw show up in a Speedo. And, Speedo? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, wow. that's funny. Me and my boys watched it today. Like as many episodes as we couldn't. Like, awesome. hey, because one, uh, one of them's a real big time fisherman and, no, they're just they, – and they know all about Impact Wrestling. They know all about who you are. And I'm like, dude, screw Impact Wrestling, man. This is legit stuff. <laughs> Dimitri, I'm telling you right now, you go and you check it, and you're going to be locked and loaded, and you'll, you'll, you'll binge watch it. and Guaranteed. Guaranteed. 20, uh, 20, 26 episodes, I think it was. was That's a good show. About 30 it, minutes long, an hour long? 30 minutes, yep. I well, love I think no, about- it's, it's, it's boxed for an hour, so it's a 41-minute episode, I think it is. I love the diversity or the fact that you get to, you know, show yourself to the to the world more. And, it, it, you know, it, it, it takes time to come out because, you know, when you record these things, they're like years behind, then you're like, do, do you ever watch them? And you're like, oh, man, I forgot I did that or we forgot we shot that because that had to be, you know, 26 episodes. That that That's no short chump change. Like, how long did it yeah. take to – to film all that like you, uh, so you it, take a break it was wrestling? no so it, what happened was is it, it, and it's funny how it happened so like we went into shooting them right away and in television which i found out it's like it's like wait 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 okay we want 12 episodes tomorrow so basically like it would take us six or seven days to shoot an episode and what would happen is we would shoot an episode and then on the days off, those guys would fly home and hang out with their families and, you know, change out the gear and do their laundry. I would fly to wrestling. So yeah. Like my days off, my days off were getting spent punched in the face by Samoa Joe, you know, like that was, that was <laughs> those were my days off from the fishing show. I, I was definitely burning it on both ends. Those are long days. Uh, you're all amped up. You can't sleep at night. And I was getting, you know, I'm in some Bodunk fishing village and, on the coast somewhere and I'm still wrestling on TV. So I have to get up at three o'clock in the morning and drive an hour to a gym to, to work out and then drive an hour back and shower and eat before I even meet these guys to, to do the show all day and like 16 hours in the sun and wrestling with 360 pound Goliath grouper and alligators and squid and every other thing. And I don't know anything about it. Like I, I didn't tell them at the time, but it's definitely out now. I hadn't had a fishing rod in my hand in almost 18 years before I started shooting. <laughs> the show. Did you? It's, you know, it's a work ethic thing. I mean, you, you, that's, you an Eric Young thing. Thing. that's an Eric Young leading by example. Now, I have to ask this now. In, in all of your time of filming this show, was there ever a, oh my gosh, I think I messed up moment where you thought, oh, I bit off a little bit of his hand? Yeah, there, I mean, there were several times where. Uh, I mean, it was a very physical show and there was times where like I'd get home for like two or three days and I'd look at my wife and be like, man, I don't, I don't know how much longer I can do this. You mean like I'm, I'm burning it on both ends and I, I, I I'm definitely not a, a, a drug guy of any kind. I've always steered clear of that, but it was like, I was having trouble sleeping at all because you're amped up all day. So I had to like get ambient to sleep and like, you're up all night with these crazy fishing guys drinking beers and carrying on like lunatics. And then I'm flying to Texas to wrestle and jump off the cage and do all this other crazy stuff. So it definitely wore me down more mentally than anything, but um, I wouldn't trade it for anything, man. It was uh, a huge pivoting point in my professional career because it, it made me like a kind of like a, a real celebrity, not just a guy in wrestling. And right. it was a good timing with my contract at the time. And, uh, yeah, it, I mean, and just, the truth is, is like, I probably would have done the show for free because it was so fun. Like, just the crew was amazing. And like, I've experienced, like, I can go shot for shot with any fishing guy stories in the world. But like, I got, yeah. I got paid to stand at sportsman conventions in front of 4,000 guys. And I'm supposed to be like teaching seminars. And I'm like, I don't know anything about <laughs> fishing. But who wants to talk about the show? And I would just stand there and answer questions about the show for like two and a half hours. So, it, I mean, it, my, my life was wild at that point. It was definitely wild, but it, it was 
it was an absolute blast and an honor to do the show for sure. Wow. Now, back, back in 2009, I was, this is my last year in Washington. Our spring training was in Melbourne, Florida. And I had a buddy who knew some guys at TNA. So I would make frequent trips up there to TNA. And let me tell you, being there and being around the guys, and I was, I was starstruck by seeing Sting and, and Kurt Angle and, and watching how the hierarchy and stuff goes. Mick Foley was there. And of course, you was there kicking ass and taking names. Um, y'all are, it seemed like y'all are like teammates, just like in baseball yeah. and, and hockey. All of you guys, you know, rely on each other and things like that. Can you just um, explain a little bit more to the, the listeners that don't understand what team sports and working with each other mean? Yeah, I mean, I, like you guys in team sports is like, I mean, often you're around those people more than you're around your family. You know what I mean? And you, you, you know, I mean, there's definitely groups. You have people that you hang out with more and you're not always going to agree, but there's always like kind of a, like, there's a constant thread. It's like your love of sport or your love of baseball or your love of hockey or your love of wrestling. So that you always had that common ground. And it, it's for us, it's, it, you know, it's very interesting where like you're putting your life in each other's hands on a nightly basis. You mean like one wrong thing you're paralyzed or, you know, like a guy gets hurt for real and cuts years off his career. So there's a, there's this weird unspoken bond there um, that really makes you close. You know what I mean? Like I can say like the Motor City Machine Guns from Detroit, like these are guys I saw every week for 12 years. And then they left TNA and I went to the WWE and we didn't see each other for almost seven or eight years. And then I saw them at Slammiversary and it's like, you pick right back up where you left off. Like you yeah. saw each other last week. And this is this weird bond, this weird brotherhood where like you might not always see eye to eye and maybe you don't, you know, you're not going to go hang out with that guy and spend a weekend at his house, but there is always common ground there. And there's this weird uh, kind of very symbolic, beautiful brotherhood in all team sports and Even wrestling. Thing. Yep. It is, it is individual, but the reality is, is we're together as a team trying to put on a show. You I mean, like one thing doesn't work with the, the other. Cards and shows are organized in a way to make everybody a part of it. And, and you know, everyone has a role. Like, you know, like Darren playing on the grind line. Like, yeah. okay, he wasn't paying 25 minutes, but I bet you if you ask Steve Eisenman or anyone that, on that team, those guys were just as big a part of that team as anybody. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's the same in wrestling. Like the opening match sets the tone. The tag match is the breath of fresh air. The comedy aspect is is a, a moment for the fans to kind of relax. Like if it's just two guys beating each other over the head for three hours, it sucks. Yeah. You know, so it, it's the ultimate variety show. And there's always this weird camaraderie, this weird bond, this weird brotherhood that exists in all of it, which is a huge thing for me because I've played sports my whole life. So. Well, who, how about some of your, like, because what I love about wrestling is the storylines, right? So I don't yeah. have to agree with it, but if it makes sense for the storyline or how it plays out, I love it. Um, what are the, you know, some of the things, um, fuck it, forgot my question. I don't know. No, I know. I um, can't read just, your mind. <laughs> no, it was on the, some of the things, um, oh, that, that your dance partners. That's what when you see guys wrestle, but you see we talk about. But who are some of like guy where where you don't have to think? And you mentioned the grind line. So what made yeah. us meet? What made me Draper and Malby so good is that we didn't have to think, right? Yeah. We we just reacted. Is there wrestling guys because you've wrestled over the years? But you, you, you know you go into a match and you're just sort of like you you're said comfortable with. You're, yeah, you're comfortable. yeah, yeah. You're comfortable. Yeah. With, you know that if you catch your back and you got hits. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 I mean it is the same as as sports. It's like a chemistry, right? It's certain guys, you know. I've definitely been in the ring with guys that that I respect and I think they're incredible, but for some reason we don't mesh. Right. You know, it's the the it, it, we're a step off or we're a step behind or it feels that way. Often, uh, once you get to a certain level of skill, like people are watching, won't really notice it, but you're working way harder. Like Bobby Roode, for example, you know, glorious Bobby Roode, one of my best friends in the business. Like he could show up here right now and we could have a four-star match without even talking. 
Like he's, he's so good and his footwork is so good and his timing is so good. And also it's, it's how you look at wrestling, um, your belief, like what, what it is to have a good match and, and different people look at different thing and wrestling is diff, different in sport where it's, it is art. You I mean, it's, it's very subjective and what is good for one person might not be good for another. And what so, one fan likes, another fan doesn't like. So Eric, like getting off um, DMAX question, like, does that still happen today? And listen, you're a veteran. You've been around for a long time. Does that still happen today when you hop in the ring with someone? And it, it, happens, it happens less because of experience. Like yeah. over time, you just figure out what it is that you do and what you do well. And you do those things. And whoever is the other side it doesn't really matter you I mean you're with guys that do this for a living too so they're yeah. supposed to and 90 percent of the time they do they're on a skill level similar to mine so yeah, like, it's the best I of the can, best yeah it's you know I mean like there's you know in the world there's 250 jobs in pro wrestling and and you know wow. I mean, the guys that are on tv are the best of the best and there's yep. you know hundreds of thousands of guys you know what i mean like all over the world so definitely it definitely happens um but through uh, experience, you get better at covering it up or just gotcha. moving on kind of thing. Can I talk a little bit about your return back to Impact Wrestling, which I'm beyond thrilled. Yes. I'm a fan. Wow. I'm a T- TNA original fan myself. Watching you come back and the way you're doing it. And a lot of times people say you can never go home again or you see a guy leave an organization and come back and it's still not the same, but it doesn't seem like that's the case with you. You come back and you're probably, like I said at the beginning of the show, hotter now than you were at your peak at TNA. What do you think is the mathematical equation to breaking this down? Because first of all, impact is defying the odds, which I think even in this time of COVID is probably – Maybe in terms of the hottest organization, number one, from news, from, from storylines, top to bottom, hiring people when other organizations are laying off, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, for me, it, it's it literally it, – it's a business, just like the WWE is a business, just like AEW is a business. Impact at this current juncture during a global pandemic is the only wrestling company that's moving forward. You know, like uh, I would say the WWE is going backwards and AEW is holding pat. Now, I don't have, you know, their financial records, but I can say that, like, from the buzz and just from perception is it's, it's growing. Their numbers are going up. Their buy rates are going up. Their ad revenue is going up. Their social interactions are going up. That's professional growth for a TV company. So it's, it, it's very cool to be part of that. And like you said, like, sometimes, you know, you can't go home again. And I feel like part of that is true, but the reason why it, it seems more of a seamless transition is because it's a new company. I mean, it's, it's new ownership, it's new management, it's, it's on a new television channel. And I, I'll say this, like, I think I'm going to be a big part of, or I hope to be a big part of the growth going forward, but everybody that's worked there over the last four or five years, uh, whether they're still there or they were there for a short time and they left and now they're somewhere else is like, we all owe them a debt of gratitude, man. Like they're, Eric, uh-huh. they're doing these shows in front of nobody and, and not on television. It's at its lowest point and they brought it back from death. Like it's, it's an impressive, impressive thing. Impact is so much more entertaining than WWE right now. It's awesome. And now we just got to get, get it to the point to where you guys are getting what you deserve because mm-hmm. listen, I watched a little bit here and there and Dimitri and Dennis got me into it. I will tell you right now, I will watch an impact, whether it be pay-per-view or whatever it may be way more than I will turn on um, a, a WWE. No, obviously it's, it's more, you know, nationally televised and that, but yep. impact is going to top it. I hope it does. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to be right yeah. there uh, uh, riding the wave because it's that good. Yeah. It, it, it feels, it's really cool to be part of something like that. It's uh I mean, I, I would, in sport, I would signal it to like being coming in as, as a young guy to a team that's not good. And maybe the first couple of years being on a team that's not great. And then it builds and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're collecting that's free amazing. agents. And yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I'll just call you Eisman, bro. I'll just call you Eisman, bro. That's I, it. You're I there. <laughs> no, I, but that's the, you know, the, and, and that's why to elaborate about what, t- because what you said about being, 
uh, the vet, veteran having the experience. Well, it's, it's almost like all of us sort of, you know, we've been through the war of attrition of life and you sort of figures, ah, okay, I'm going to do this a little different, figure out. I think I know it's not, I know what I want. I know what I absolutely don't want. Right. Yes. And, it's sort yep. of, and it seems like that's, you have it. We thought culture comes from the top. It seems like with the new ownership, like the direction that it's going and yep. you have, so, you know, Rhino's a good buddy of mine. You know, great guy. Here. yeah, great guy. But it, that, and, you know, and that's the one thing is, is when I asked him, I go, why are you, you know, why are you out there taking that, that, that looked like that hurt. And he said it did, but it's because of the team aspect and the people. And he says, it can't beat it. It says it's, it feels the way it's supposed to feel. And that's an that's attribute it. to you guys. But that's, yeah, it, it feels the way that's the perfect way to say it. It feels how it's supposed to. And that was missing for me. I mean, uh, the, the, being able to be creative and be part of something, whether it's a small part or a big part. Like I, I've never asked or complained about anything. Like uh, that's why I've done a bunch of different things. Like I don't, whatever. I, I just want to be part of it. Uh, I think I'm most valuable right now in the role that I'm in. Uh, and I believe that, you know, I mean, I can be the guy that the uh, company can lean on, but if I'm not that guy, then I'm going to help the guy that they choose to be that guy Absolutely. and to to increase the viewership because there is no company. There is no me. I mean, the company has to do good for me to do good. Right. So it's, and it's everybody's pulling the rope there. And like I've been saying this about over the, the interviews over the last couple of weeks is saying it's literally limitless potential. And that doesn't mean it's going to transpire. That doesn't mean that it's going to come to fruition, but that locker room and with the creative people that are in charge and just the passion that is oozing out of everybody there, the potential is limitless. And that is, and it makes my skin like my yeah. goosebumps thinking about it. I'm not, I'm I got, not kidding. It's, it's I got goosebumps as a fan. No, yeah. he does. I just I touched on <laughs> No. Hey, you know, I, I want to know because you are sounding a lot like how we're sounding on that veteran side of the game where now you're mentoring a lot of the guys and, yeah. and, and showing the ropes. And I can tell in your voice that you have, that's, that's your passion. Now, there was one person that I wanted to bring up that you was tag team champions with, knockout tag team champions with, uh, ODB. I had a chance to yeah. meet him when I was going down to, to Orlando and, and eating at the Ale House after the event and stuff. And I was like, man, she is cool crazy, man. Is, is, yeah. she, is she always like that? Always, yeah. She's uh, one of my favorite people on earth, like uh, – Obviously, we uh, we're still married in television, so like we never been we were never, never divorced in the television world. We're definitely still married. Um, she's awesome, man. Very talented performer, um, kind, just beautiful inside and out, and just one of the very very special people that I've met. And just something about her, man. People are drawn to her and her her personality. She's polarizing, and, and it's a uh, very a very cool thing that we did. I think it was a uh, very early, like a very interesting thing at that point in wrestling where that well, that kind of storyline and that kind of humor and that kind of uh, showmanship wasn't really part of wrestling. And I feel like, you know, we were doing something that was very new at that point, uh, but I loved it, man. I, I think fans loved it. And uh, it was a very cool thing to get to hang out with that lunatic all day. <laughs> Let me ask you this because – I know a lot of wrestlers and some, their fandom of wrestling, once they get in the business varies. Where does your fandom lie still for the business? Is it because a lot of guys, once they get in, they stop being a fan, they stop watching and they just focus on themselves. Are you still kind of a student of the game? Do you still love the old stuff? Yeah, I, I, I definitely watch more old wrestling than I do new wrestling, but I can say uh, my run with the WWE, it, it, it almost extinguished that. I mean, to be honest, like I didn't watch it at all. Like I could wrestle on raw and I wouldn't even watch it. So it was, mm. uh, that was a very weird time for me. Uh, I was saying this today to my wife is like pro wrestling was the first thing that I loved. I mean, like before I loved a person other than my mother and my dad, you know, right. like that's, that's a given. But like the first thing that I chose to love was pro wrestling. And uh, I've loved it since I was a little kid. And then like, you know, partway through high school is when I, I, I got the bug. I just, I got bit by it and I just, I couldn't consume enough of it. I read about it. 
I researched it. I traded tapes with people I didn't know in LA and Mexico and Japan. And like, I just, I consumed it. Like I could, I couldn't get enough. I, I woke up, I watched it. I thought about it all day. I went to sleep watching it, it, it every day. Every second of every day was wrestling. Uh, I can say that I definitely have lots of other interests now in life. I'm married. I got dogs. I, uh, I'm crazy into fantasy sports and podcasting. And, and I did some fantasy, uh, fantasy hockey them. writing this year Yeah, with The Athletic. And uh, there's all kinds of things that I love to do. But wrestling is still my first love. I mean, like, uh, and the, going back to TNA and being part of something like that has definitely lit that fire again. I'm watching wrestling every day. It's part of my ritual. I get up. I drink coffee. I watch wrestling. And then I work out. That's, that's my day. And I usually watch it before I go to bed as well. So it's uh, old stuff that I haven't watched before, or I mean, maybe I forget that I've watched, you know, <laughs> the old memories, the old memories starting to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It works too. It, trust me, it gets a lot worse. <laughs> uh, that, uh, so hey, let me ask you a question real quick and talking about uh, kind of the DMAC and Dimitri's um, uh, uh, to follow up on theirs is a guy like Chris Bay. That's my dude. I don't know if you like him, you don't like him. It doesn't yeah. matter as far as off. But so, like, when you hop in a ring with him, and obviously you're, you're a, probably a huge mentor to him, um, and he handled – he was on the show, and he handled himself so well. And I don't know if that's something yeah. like, you know, from whether you, Tommy, or whatever, but, I mean, does that get you excited when you see – because I know that when I, when I was kind of at the end of my career, um, you know, and Eric Hosmer, Mike Moustakis, th those guys that were coming up in the Royals um, organization, it was so neat, so fun, so uh, – um, I just – Gave no me part. energy, energetic yeah. to, to, Bre to breath of fresh air. Yes. Yeah, yeah, a, a total breath of the fresh air. And to and then when I was done playing, and I was in the front office for the Royals for quite some time um, when they won the World Series, that watching these guys, it was so gratifying, rewarding, whatever you want to call it to me, to watch these guys. And listen, it's not like I needed. It. I want to say, Kendall, I knew that I helped them out at some point little things, whether it be getting a guy over, whatever it may be, or just off the field, or person, whatever. And it was so gratifying to me to watch these guys jump up and down and win a World Series against the New York Mets um, and then 2015. It was – so when you see these younger guys like Chris Bay come in, do, do you just instantly kind of like, hey, let's – or – I mean, obviously they're going to gravitate to you. And, and when Dimitri and myself broke in, and probably DMAC as well, when we broke in, it was like, don't speak until you're spoken to, you know, you kind of yeah. keep your head in your locker, shut up type thing. And how was that in um, wrestling? But I, cause I, I just, by talking to you and the fact that you're Aquaman, um, I can honestly <laughs> probably tell you that you walk over and, and try, obviously you're going to, you're going to be nice, greet him, et cetera, et cetera. But okay, Jason. here's what, shut up Dennis. But here's like, this is how we go about our business. Yeah. Uh, I think that has always uh, existed in wrestling because there is no replacement for experience. I mean, like you can, uh, I mean, even me, like 10 years ago, I, I thought, oh man, like there's no way I can be better than I am now. And then I think how much better I am at the art of wrestling now than I was 10 years ago, because you just learn as you experience things. Um, part of the excitement of being in impact is looking around Chris Bay, you know, uh, Rich Swan, who's, you know, he's been doing it for a while, but he's a younger guy. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I'm trying to think Fulton, who I had a bit of experience with uh, in the other place. So, you know, like there's just, there's passion, there's hunger. And that is exciting. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a raw, raw guy where I'm going to stand up and have a speech and tell them how it's done. And back in the day we did this, and none of that kind of stuff. <laughs> if they ask for my opinion then I'm going to give it to them, whether they want to hear it or not. I'm going – with pro wrestling, it's hard to because it is subjective, right? It is, it is a, a form of art where it's, it's, it's what he believes is going to work, I might not agree with. But I'm going to tell him from my experience, like working in that five-way with Trey and Ace Austin, like there was a bunch of things that I said during the day. I said, hey, like in my opinion – maybe try this and then do this and cut that out. And they were, both of them were like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's because they can't know what they don't know. Right. They're young. You mean, right. and when I, as soon as I say it, you can see the light bulb that goes on and they're like, Oh yeah. So it, a lot of it is like, they're, they're going to do all this stuff. And he 
tried to sleep with my mom is their storyline and he hates his guts. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to attack him right away. And I was like, well, rather than just attacking him, why don't you chase him and you don't get your hands on him till later. And then when you get your hands on him later, it means something. You just start beating him up right away. When you get him later, it doesn't mean anything. And that all comes with experience and stuff. So it's, you know, teaching them things like that and, and, and helping to tighten the screws, uh, there with, with some of the missteps and, and, uh, you know, things that, that could be improved on and, and strengthened. Like that's a, a passion of mine. I want, I, I want everyone to have a career like mine. I mean, like I, I'm not rich by any means, but I have this amazingly beautiful life from pro wrestling. I mean, it, and, and I want them to have that too. And the only way to do that is longevity. And the only way to have longevity is to be good and to change with how wrestling changes because wrestling changes constantly right now. Wrestling is what it is tomorrow. It's going to be different and it changes every day. I know we got to wrap this up with you. You got a lot of things going on. You need to get your pump on as the gym rat over here would say. <laughs> well, I'm I, not going to do it. So you got to do it <laughs> twice for me too. I just want to wrap <laughs> this up too. by asking you this I'm done. question. You're a Canadian guy. Are you a Red Wings fan or are you a Leafs fan? Because he said, I, he, he said he grew up a it, Toronto fan, but but yeah. uh, now so so what's what's up with the Nashville stuff? Okay, I, Dennis. I, what's up with the Nashville stuff? Where's your fandom like? Come on now. So I grew up where where we grew up. I mean, and definitely in the era of me. Like I'm 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 40 years old. So it was like you were a Red Wings fan. Or you were a Leafs fan, and like you could sprinkle in. There were some Maple uh, Habs fans, some Boston fans, whatever. But most everybody where I grew up, it was one or the other. And I don't really know why, but I feel like I chose. Uh, Wendell Clark is my favorite hockey player of all time. That's he why he made me like the Maple Leafs. That's why. Yeah, I that's you know, I mean, like that's that's. I fell in love with how he played. I guess I liked his mustache. I don't know. Like that's that's what drew me to the Maple Leafs. So I be, I became a fan of theirs because of where I grew up. Fast forward to 2004. I live in Nashville. Like this is my home. I, I could live anywhere on earth, literally. Well, in North America, but I choose here. I love Nashville. I love the city. Uh, I do a bunch of stuff with the team every year. Know a bunch of the players. Know a bunch of the coaches. Um, that's my team by choice. I grew up having to choose Detroit or Toronto. <laughs> Toronto will always be a part of my fandom. The truth is, is I love the NHL. Like I've got 40 jerseys. I got 30, 30 different tank tops. So I don't have to wear jerseys in the summer. Cause I'm a sweater. Cause I'm a, a Canadian hot blood Canadian pig. But it like, it, I just love hockey, man. I love all hockey. It's, it's probably outside of wrestling. It's my number one love for sure. Well, well Eric, I, I will say this, and this will be the last thing I say is you're <laughs> now that we're all older at DS. I promise. Um, what I've, what I've figured out is um, the, the, the team that you're going to be the fan for from now on is the one who covers the spread. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. All right. Well, I, well hold on before you, hold on, I, got, hey, I, got, I, got, I got to give him an open invite to we're going to oh, skate yeah. if he ever brings his skates or when it comes when you show up in Detroit or whatever like that we're going to get some ice bro we're going to that'd gonna be awesome man down old school style but uh, I hey I'm going to say thanks for uh joining us we'll be paying attention watching what you got big things and uh look forward to finding meeting in person one day Dimitri yeah man I wanted to know with the storyline going with Moose having the TNA belt and Eddie Edwards with the impact belt um which belt are you um, going to be going for, relative? Well, he's not here, so I would say that Moose's belt isn't real. I mean, he just <laughs> – he didn't beat anybody. He just showed up. I think, he, I think he bought it on the internet. Maybe he bought it from me. I don't know. Maybe that was my <laughs> old one. I thought I was going to be unemployed, so I sold my old world titles and <laughs> Moose bought it from me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Edwards is that's 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 my target. I mean, that's that's my goal. Um, it's always been my goal, and I feel like if it's not your goal and you're in wrestling, then you're in wrestling for the wrong reasons. So all the other stuff is all well and good, but if you don't want to be the guy, if you don't want to be the world champion, be the one that the company's leaning on the most, then you're probably doing it for the wrong reasons. And I can tell you, that's that's where the target's set. That's where we're heading, one way or the other. Well, Eric, mm. thank you so much for stopping thank by you. and joining us. And hopefully yes. we can have you on again way down the line when you have more time. I when you have that belt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Well, Thank during you. COVID, I, I mean, I'm, I'm basically unemployed for months at a time. So I got nothing but time on my hand, boys. This is fun. Don't say that to them. Don't say that to them. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go downhill for you really quick. Yeah. Eric Young. <laughs> Thank you for so much for yeah. stopping by with Wrestling with Sport. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Relative.